Hello everyone. A few weeks ago, when we published our video on beheading, we got a request. One of our subscribers, called Mostly True, asked, can we get one on the Catherine wheel? Well, who are we to say no? So ladies and gentlemen, here is our guide to the old method of torture and execution known as breaking on the wheel. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, the breaking wheel or Catherine wheel, due to its alleged connection to St. Catherine of Alexandria, is a form of execution so brutal, even the English left it a well alone. I know. We have hanging, drawing and quartering, but we'll stop short of this. For this, you have to go to continental Europe, particularly the Holy Roman Empire, which comprises much of Central Europe in the day. And the day in question, you need to go back to Tudor times for its heyday. Although we can get references going all the way back to the 6th century for breaking on the wheel. Now we don't have a huge number of primary sources remaining, but it does appear in what's known as the Saxon Spiegel or Saxon Mirror, which is the chief law book of the Holy Roman Empire. And that's that part of medieval Europe, which is neither holy, Roman, nor an empire. But I digress. From the Saxon Spiegel, we learn that this punishment is handed down to murderers and arsonists. It's also used for street robbers and highwaymen. And while you might be thinking execution for that sort of crime may sound harsh, do remember, as we said in our episode on the Bloody Code, this is a time before police forces, so punishments are very heavy on deterrent. So how does it work? Well, this is an execution in two parts, and the first part is very much designed so that you do not die. No, first, they just break your limbs. This can be done by dropping a cartwheel on the respective limbs. This is known as wheeling rather than breaking on the wheel, but it's part of a similar sentence. Or they could lash the prisoner to a similar cartwheel and then deliver several good hard whacks to the limbs with an iron bar or a large hammer. Because let's be honest, medieval Germans do enjoy a large hammer. If that wasn't crazy enough, the number of strikes, the speed and the rhythm would all actually be prescribed within the sentence. German serial killer Peter Niers was convicted of 544 murders. He received 42 strikes of the wheel before the rest of his execution was carried out. 42 and he was still alive afterwards. Now, however many strikes a sentence prescribed, the end result was the same. The condemned man's limbs and plenty of other bones would be broken by the end of part one. In many cases, wooden blocks or wooden wedges would be placed beneath the limbs to ensure breakage, as we can see in this picture here. Grim. So let's get a contemporary description. We have here an extract from an Irish eyewitness to a French breaking that took place in 1788. I have been to see a most stressful spectacle, a man broken alive upon a cross, which they call breaking on the wheel. The multitude gathered, beheld the executioner take up an iron bar and begin the tragedy by striking his victim on the forearm which being placed immediately over the notches was by the blow of the bar smashed and crushed down onto it. The next one struck one of the legs in the same manner and then a thigh and well you get the idea. And once the limbs are all broken it gets worse. Let's return to Paris in 1788. All the limbs of the prisoner being broken, the executioner looked at his watch and let the prisoner remain in that deplorable state for some minutes according to his sentence. Wow, they actually prescribed a number of minutes to remain there in that agony. Yeah, but it doesn't end there. On a signal given by the principal executioner, they turned a windlass and gave the prisoner a violent tug such as must have dislocated the vertebrae in the prisoner's neck. Then again, took up the iron bar and gave the prisoner three most violent blows on the belly and stomach, such as must have burst the arteries, the stomach and diaphragm into one mass of blood and wounds. Ouch. And remember, this is just part one of the sentence. In this case, the guy was still alive some 15 minutes later when they moved on to stage two. In Germany, 
Serious offences will be broken from the bottom up, i.e. starting at the lower limbs and working up the body. More trivial offences will be broken from the top down, the upper body blows being more likely to cause an accidental fatality. But once part one of the sentence have been appropriately administered, the shattered, but in many cases still living, remains of the condemned would then be twisted through the spokes of the wheel before the whole contraption was raised up to the open air like a crucifixion, and the body left to die and decompose as food for the local scavenging animals, and a gruesome display to serve as a warning to others. Sometimes the executioner was permitted to behead the prisoner as a mercy. I know, what a treat. But mostly they were just left there. Details are sketchy, but we have an account of a 14th century murderer that not only stayed alive, but remained conscious for three days. And we have a statement from another man remaining conscious for four days and four nights. That's got to be awful. That's got to be a fate worse than death. But it's not all doom and gloom. If the prisoner falls from the wheel, alive, or the execution fails at all, then that's God's judgment and away you go. Or at least go away as far as you can still walk. Uh, in fact, on the 3rd of August 1788, Frenchman Jean Louchard was even rescued from the wheel when the crowd stormed the scaffold. You can find, as well, medical textbooks of the time that are devoted to treatment of injuries for wheel survivors. So we know this happened a fair few times. Now, as we say, this is not an English method of execution, but it has happened in Scotland in the early 17th century when it was carried out on servant Robert Weir for the murder of Lord John Kincaid. And it turned out Weir had carried out the murder at the behest of Kincaid's wife. She was beheaded as a result. Breakings also happened on a number of occasions in colonial America, mostly as the aftermath of slave revolts in the 18th century French colonies. But the attempted execution of Jean Lechard that we mentioned a moment ago saw the end of breaking in the wheel in France, as post-revolution, the introduction of the guillotine gave a more standardised and much more foolproof method of execution. You weren't pretty much falling off that one and getting that off. And within 50 years, the rest of Europe had followed suit. The last known breaking on the wheel took place in Prussia in 1841. So, I hear you all ask. How does it become the Catherine Wheel? Well, the story basically goes like this. Saint Catherine of Alexandria refused to renounce her Christian beliefs and was sentenced to be broken upon the wheel. And legend states that when Catherine touched the wheel, it shattered into a thousand pieces and she was beheaded instead. It is also said that on beheading, the wound flowed with milk and not blood. Those are her miracles. And that's her basic association with the wheel. But... There are a couple of problems with this when we talk about Catherine Wheels. The first being that she wasn't actually martyred on the wheel, as we explained, she was beheaded. And the second being that we cannot actually locate any hard evidence that she existed as a person. The cult of Catherine starts in the early 6th century and it's some 300 years after her supposed martyrdom. And there's been no evidence to suggest that breaking on the wheel was ever used as a punishment in Egypt. We have seen it in France, Germany, Sweden, Scotland, America and India, but never Egypt. The modern scholars now believe the legend to be an amalgamation of St. Dorothea and Greek philosopher Hypatia, with Christianity replacing Greek paganism in the latter tales. So, when you light a Catherine wheel on Guy Fawkes Night or 4th of July, or whatever reason that you have for that firework display, Please bear in mind, it represents a saint, we cannot evidence, a method of martyrdom that wasn't used on a festival that isn't about her. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.